Hello, how you doing? I'm Craig Parkinson. You are listening to the Two Shot Podcast. Sit yourself down, pop the kettle on. We're going to have a nice old chat. Who's it with this week? I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> How the devil are you? It's Thursday, you're here. Everything good? You all right? Good week? Fantastic. Good news. I am recording this in a hotel in uh, in London and I'm looking out of the window. There's not a cloud in the sky. It's a beautiful day. Um, did you need to know that information? I don't, I don't know. It's episode 56. That's the information you need to know and it is with the fantastic... Susan Wacoma. Um, we met Susan in our regular place in Maison Bateau. Big shout out to Annie Wade for letting us use the basement there. And she came to meet us. She'd had a big long day in uh, the writer's room, which is something we talk about, something she's doing at the moment. And uh, yeah, we, uh, we, we talked it out, man. We talked it out. Um, it was fantastic great to spend time with her and I think you're really going to love the episode. Um, I want to say thank you to you for downloading and subscribing. You know how much it means to me and producer Griff. Um, And all your comments and your messages for Carl Pilkington last week. What an absolute belter. Um, Not really much of a thank you to the person who uh, took it off YouTube and put it on something else and then put on a load of adverts. That's not really cool, is it? But anyway, that's going to be sorted. Let's not worry. Um, As you may or may not know, we are doing the Manchester Podcast Festival on October the 5th, 7.30 in Manchester. I announced our guest this week. Finally, we've made it work. It's the one and only Mr. Ralph Little. It's going to be a brilliant natter. Uh, go to Manchester Pest- Man- go to manchesterpodcastfestival.com. Get your tickets for the Two Shot Podcast with myself and Ralph. Producer Griff will be there. And I think I'm right in saying there might be a few past Two Shot Podcast guests coming along. Um, so that'll be nice to see them. Always nice. And it'll be nice to see you. So please do come and join us. It'll be great. Well, I think we should get down to it, don't you? This is episode 56 with Susan Wakoma. I love it. See you at the end. Uh, Obviously, my my words fell on fucking deaf ears, didn't they? (laughs) I don't give a shit about you, man. Oh, man. They were seem to be... They've got louder. They seem to be really nice when I did it. (laughs) I'll just go up and go. We've just started. All right. Okay. <laughs> I know. I can't. I can't do that. Thanks so much. I just let you just hit record. So thanks so much. All right. Cheers. Are you okay? Okay, thank you so much. Oh. Are you all right? Yes. I know. I literally <laughs> felt that. I had to felt good, though. Yeah. It's nice to have some power sometimes. Yeah, isn't it, really? bit. <laughs> I get it very rarely these I, days. I feel like that that moment made me feel like in school, like when someone's about to have a fight and somebody says, Your mum is a fucking dude. And you just, me in the back goes, Ooh, It's gonna go. Did you feel it from up there? Yes, that's <laughs> Were you recording that, girl? <laughs> fucking, that's the way to start a podcast, isn't it? <laughs> listen to me. Listen to me. I have no power in my life. The little I can do is go, can you please it. just shut the fuck up a minute while I just talk to somebody? <laughs> I love it. I felt really at school. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. You have a good day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell really me what day. you're doing right now because it's interesting to me. Right. You don't have to divulge too many secrets. Yeah. But it's nice. What am I doing? Well, I'm... Di- I'm, the, the, I'm I've joined a... I've joined a writer's room, which is something that is, as far as I know, is very American. So it's basically when a show um, has a series, rather than relying on one writer, you get a room full of writers, you bounce off ideas. Some of you have guaranteed an episode that you're going to write. Some of you don't. Um, And, yes, this is for a a Netflix show. Can't say what it is. 
But um, but yeah, it's literally four new writers, two of the regular writers, producer in the room, and we're literally just going, maybe if this character, or what if this character, it's just real basic just using your imagination. throwing everything against the wall and yeah. seeing what sticks. Yeah, like you... the good, the bad, and the bad ideas. Me, what? I'm talking about me. No, I know, but the thing is, it's like with everything, isn't it? You've got to go through the bad. Yeah. And not be afraid. Yeah. Yeah. With, with regards, you're in the, the writer's room, whatever. Yeah. Whether you're, you're acting or you're totally. painting or you're writing a song. Totally. It's going to be shit. I know. Only they can you scrape away the yeah. rubbish and go, oh, it's, it's half decent, actually. Exactly. I'm not 100% proud of it, but. Yeah. But, but I'm, I'm getting better at like when I say a really rubbish idea, I just stick to it and I keep bringing it up. Just at least for comedic value, I'll be like, so the reason why that sheep should definitely. <laughs> fuck her ear is because it will bring <laughs> nuance to it. I just keep repeating See, I definitely watch a show like that. <laughs> There's not enough sheep doing Fucking that ears. on telly. I know. <sighs> but is it a different, uh, it's a different world though with, with other people, do you think? It is. I mean, what they've done is there's a good mix of predominantly writer performers so there's something about us coming up with stories and thinking about people actually having to do them and words that people actually have to say whereas sometimes i think with writers they don't think about actually what sounds realistic coming out of someone's mouth whereas i'm constantly thinking you know is is that completely stupid um but yeah no it's completely different and it's the first i'm doing it for a month it's like the most nine to five my life has ever been Ever. <laughs> so is it is it odd to have that structure in your life yeah, at this but, moment? Do you know what? It's come at a really good time. It's come at a really, really good time because it's still completely, it is absolutely creative. You are literally just thinking about the bare bones of story, yeah. which is really exposing. So it's it's creative, but you're just sat around the table. and um, But it came at a point where I needed to... I needed to learn from other people. I needed to have some structure. And I know because it's a very short amount of time, I think that's why I'm able to mentally do it. And also um, commit, you commit to that, yeah. to that four weeks. Yeah. And I've had to, like, I've had to, like, go, I'm, all right, I'm not doing any acting bits and bobs. I'm going to do this. And it's been, it's been really good for me because it's been fucking and good. <laughs> and in a way, it's kind of scary but freeing at the yeah. same time, I suppose. Yeah. Because there are things that you're like, oh, no, you're not free for. Oh, you can't do that. Oh, no, you can't. And you're just a bit like, nope, nope, nope. This is what I need to do. And also, I'm taking me being a writer really fucking seriously. And that means that you have to... I've always had a weird relationship with it. I've only been writing the last couple of years. And because I'm working, I'm working class. So I have to... What I found really hard with writing is when you're at the point of, you know, being commissioned, you're not getting paid enough to afford rent. No. And I'm lucky that acting is something by and large that can cover rent so it's been really hard to find something to commit to um and not act because i'm like well it isn't how can you offer me if you got a couple of grand to develop something for over the course of 18 months it's like no i've got to keep doing other stuff yeah so this has been good because it just means i am gonna knuckle down and and focus on and also it, it's kind of fulfilling in a different way yeah. i suppose yeah not, yeah, to, not to put different. thoughts or feelings into, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's fulfilling into it. Isn't it? Yeah. You have a good time, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is, it is. I I've always been cautious about jumping on other people's stories because I don't, I've been largely writing about, writing my own stuff. So this is also an experiment of whether, oh, can I do this? Can I join a room and write, and write on something that isn't my creation? But I suppose it's different. Everybody has different process. Yeah. You know, whatever forms that they do. And... If you go after this month, yeah, I'm not sure about that in yeah. the room. Or, yeah, I'm absolutely vibing it because we're, we're bouncing the balls of ideas off yeah. each other all the time and something good's going to come of it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I am, I'm, I've am i definitely gone into this. Not, not, I don't know what is going to happen at the end or how I'm going to feel about it in the end. But I think that's exciting. Yeah, it's really Cause, nice. Because uh, only something positive will, will come at the end of yeah. it. Whatever yeah, yeah. it will be, it's got to be positive. I yeah, mean, yeah. It can't fail. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So tell me about growing up. <laughs> <laughs> you spoke about your working class then. Yeah, yeah. I'm always interested. Yeah. 
Yeah, we did not have any money. We didn't. <laughs> we just didn't. We did the oh god. Where are where are we? We're in Southwark. We're in we're in Southwark. We're in South East London. So right. born in a hospital, obviously. <laughs> born in a hospital. I don't know. I don't know. My, well, son, actually, my son was born in the front room of our old house. Was he? Yeah. I've always wanted that, but then you didn't see our, our house was mashed up. <laughs> <laughs> if I was born there, I would have got a fucking tennis. <laughs> Sorry, mum. Um, it's true. No, we did the best with what we had. Um, no, I was born in, um, we lived in Peckham when I was born. Uh, Peckham and Camberwell and then Elephant Castle, which is where my mum is now. We've been there over 25 years. Um, my parents, Nigerian, um, I was born here, my old brother was born here, my older sister was born in Nigeria, so they'd been, you know, they'd been in London a little while. And um, my mum worked as a cleaner, my dad worked as a cleaner growing up. Um, each had about three jobs each, so it wasn't... Just like, just to survive and just to, to survive. get food on, food on the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, we had... <laughs> I think the moment I realised we didn't have money was <laughs> um, my second primary school in Camberwell... Um, my dad was washing my my school skirt, and I, we didn't have an. I only had one, and um, and by the time I woke up Monday morning, it was still wet. So he, he sent me to school in a jumper, my tights, and my shoes, and I didn't know. I didn't have a clue. I was just running around, and the teachers must have been like, "What the fuck?" Oh, you and I was just running around. And then one of the teachers went into lost property and got me a skirt. Man alive. Yeah, things like that. That was real. It got better as we got older. Yeah. Definitely got better as we got older. But we... And, and also, I kind of feel like I'm betraying my family a little bit by admitting that we didn't have money because it was just... It's not an excuse. I mean, when we went out as a family to, like, family parties or we look good. Yeah. Like, we look the fuck good. Like... We didn't, my mum always says, never look like your situation. That's good. Yeah, it's a good, it's just yeah. like, don't let, like, you fucking know if you're going through hell, don't advertise it. Not because they're shaming it, but because sometimes you have to walk it before yeah, you feel it. Yeah, also for your own self-esteem. Look after your ego and your yeah, self-esteem. Yeah, That's yeah. one thing that I'll say about Nigerians, the Nigerians that I've met and been surrounded by, is the ego of these people. Like, my mum would be going through hell, but never did she question how beautiful she was ever she was just always hot she was just always gorgeous and, she, and that was one my mom could be a fucking nightmare but it was one that she's like you're beautiful you you know you are like and would take pleasure if like a guy whistled at me or something like that my mom would be like see you're mine <laughs> of course of course of course but, that's pride though yeah right? but you've got to have something but exactly it, and it feels real and also when i finally went back to nigeria i got it like when did you go back to nigeria first time i went was i did a film uh, oh, this was for work? You yeah, it's for back. work, first time. Yeah. How lucky is that? Really weird. Because I wanted to go on my own, but my mum said, I've said this before, my mum just was convinced I'd get killed, and she was just, because you're stupid. <laughs> you'll, you'll get into someone's car, and they will slit your throat. Um, <laughs> my mum would just, she just didn't want me to ever go, so I ended up going with a, a film, and then I went at the beginning of this year for another film, actually. It's been work both wow. times. And, um, Isn't that amazing? Like, yeah, with what we do, how lucky we are that we wouldn't get, travel to places yeah. that we may may or may not want to go. No, just it's amazing. And I met all I met all my family on that trip as well. Did you? Yeah, yeah, grandparents. How was that? Cousins. It was mad. It was really weird. And because my my dad died during film, he died died the morning I landed. No um, way. So so the production company were really great, and they sent me off to. Um, meet my family when I had like five days off. So I met everybody. And the weirdest thing was just, I couldn't get over how black everyone was. Everyone was just black. Like I didn't stand out until I opened my mouth. I was just like everyone else, which made me realise how much I I don't feel that when I'm at home in, in London. Do you feel, do you feel that, that you, sta did you feel that you stood out growing up when you were a kid? Um, not really because of where we grew up. Yeah. Like everyone was, working class everyone was working class whether you were white or black um my mum and my dad took us to church so everyone at church looked like us um yeah it wasn't until you know I didn't really experience other feeling other in a in a race way until a lot later but I felt other in that I was quite quiet and I've got a very loud family and I when were you quiet 
I was quiet. <laughs> I was quiet. I was quiet. I was quiet. Why was I fucking quiet? I was quiet. <laughs> I was, I was quiet because my family was so loud. Right, okay, so you couldn't really compete with that. No, and I just, I learnt very quickly, don't bother. I learnt very quickly, don't bother. At school, I was loud as fuck. Because you could be. Yeah. yeah. But it was like split personality. I was yeah. completely different at home to how I was at school. But sometimes you kind of adapt to your surroundings, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, you do. Which is what I did. And I thrived in school. So I felt like I got mostly what, what I felt I did. I felt that I got all that I needed at school that I didn't really need from home. And then, of course, you grow up and realise. But even though from <laughs> okay. your own admission, like, it, you, it was a poor household. Yeah, it was. And, but obviously a couple of very hard-working parents. But yeah. it sounds to me that it it was a happy environment. Um, or... Not really. Right. <laughs> not really. Well, I've, I've completely read that you, situation Yeah, you read it wrong, wrong mate. Uh, no, no, not that it was. I think it's, it, it, it's, it simplifies it saying whether it was happy or sad. I think, I think one of the things that you can't escape if you're the child of immigrants is, especially working-class immigrants, um, is that... My parents worked so hard that there was no room for sentimentality. There was nothing really. They just didn't have the time to sit me down on their knee and tell me story. Like I knew, I know surprisingly, like embarrassingly little about Nigeria. That's been stuff that I've had to acquire because my parents were sitting down going, oh, when we were back home, this is what happened. And this is, they were just working all the time. They just wanted to just work and to become doctors and, and whatnot. And because of that, I think there was a lot missing where we had to adhere to cultural values, but we weren't necessarily taught them. Right. So there was always a barrier there. But I think, I think the main thing that was hard was my dad really believed, he really believed in like getting a gold star. He really believed in that if you work hard, you'll achieve X, Y, Z. Okay. And then as he grew up, he just, he grew up with us. He, he just realized that that isn't the case. Things are not fair. No. And um, it made him really angry. And so was so, he angry of, of the the injustices in the world or the injustices that... To that, him. To him. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think his life wasn't meant to be what it turned out to be. He worked He worked himself to death. Right. He did. By the end, he um, he was still working two jobs and he was going from um, his nine to five and then went on a Friday night and then went over to do his weekend job at the Royal Festival Hall as a security guard and had a stroke in between. Like, he, that wasn't how it was meant to, to end for him. No, of course not. And so there was a lot of disappointment and anger, I think, there. Which I understand now. I, I totally understand now. But as a kid, you're just like, why are you mad? Yeah, <laughs> of course. Yeah, bless him. Bless him. I sort of wish it came good. And do you feel... Did you think at the time that you were missing any sort of connection? Yeah, I did. I him? totally did. I felt... The thing is, I was really lucky because I got... I found... I don't know how, but I, I had loads of, like, mentors and teachers who were like you should do this and you should apply for this and have you heard of... And that was the time where there was loads of things. There were loads of groups and, you know, initiatives where you could do, you know, five drum classes or whatever. There was loads yeah, of, loads stuff, of like stuff like that. Going on. There were loads. So I did feel like I got it elsewhere, but it also meant that once I sort of discovered drama, it became very separate to my family. It, it, I didn't ever feel as weird being with other kids in shows where it meant so much to invite their parents where I wouldn't even tell them what I was doing because it just, it felt very separate. Because it was, that was your thing or you didn't think it, it would get approval? Both. Were you scared of, of of not getting the approval or getting that door shut for you? Um, I wasn't, I didn't need the approval. I really didn't. I really didn't. Um, I just, I thought I was more likely to be allowed to get on with it if I didn't cause a ruckus. Like, my main thing was right. don't, like, if I'm going to go out and... I remember when I, I, I got a place at National Youth Theatre and you have to pay money to do your course. And I didn't know that when I auditioned. Yeah. Um, so I was like, the main thing is that I will be allowed to go out and do this drama thing if I don't ask for money. So I had to apply to, for, like, different loans and grants and stuff 
to be able to pay for my course. And so if I never, it was always money. If I didn't bug them for money, yeah. they didn't really have a leg to stand on in terms of what I was going out and doing because I wasn't like going out and shooting up. Like I, I just wasn't. Yeah. I was quite a good, I was a good kid. So I, my aim was always don't give them a, re like don't depend on them and then they'll just let you do it. God, it sounds to me like you were kind of forced to grow up a bit faster than yeah. what, you should have been really i think so i think so but i think it's also like my parents from very early on and i think this is the case for a lot of immigrant parents where they're like what do you want to be what do you want to do they start asking you that question super early right and they ask you it seriously it's not like what do you want to be a wrestler oh amazing or do you know what i mean it's actually what do you want to be your options are doctor, doctor. <laughs> lawyer <laughs> nurse yeah if you fancy yeah um accountant if you like um, good, so, and, solid, stable yeah, careers. It has to be good, solid, stable. But, um, yeah, and so I, I think I said the mistake of a, a doctor at 10 and then it stuck. Did it? Yeah, stuck, like seriously stuck. I was 10, I didn't know what I was saying. I think I watched DR and thought, yeah. oh, that's fun. <laughs> not knock really. About, not, knock about with Clooney. <laughs> yeah, do you Perfect. know what I mean? Perfect. <sighs> but I didn't, yeah, I didn't understand act. I didn't understand acting. I just thought, oh, being a doctor is cool. And having explosive storylines as being a doctor. But it was obviously in you at some point. It was obviously there uh, slowly. I just, it was, it was really slow, but it was, it, if I'm being really honest, the only reason why I'm an actor is because people told me I was good at it. Because I was good at it. I was good at it. People go, you're good at it. I'd be like, oh, brilliant. I'm not, unfortunately, I'm not, and I'm trying to change this about me. If I don't have a natural aptitude for something, I'm like, nah, bollocks. <laughs> what, you just sort of just throw yeah. the towel then? The amount of, like, I had piano lessons at school, didn't have a natural knack for it, stopped. Drums, didn't have a natural knack, stopped. Trombone, didn't have a natural... I just, I'm such a... If I don't feel an instant, like, connection and gel, and there isn't, like, a, like obvious capability in something, I just go, fuck it. And with acting, it was... I always knew on some degree. I was like, no, I'm, I'm good at this. Jeez, you sound like my son. He's had three piano lessons. He's gone, no, I'm not feeling it. I went, you're seven years old. Do you, who do you think you are? <laughs> Just, I said, you've got, to, you've got to keep trying. Nah, I'm with your son on that one. Oh, no, don't, don't listen to Susan. If you listen, he won't listen to this. He's fine, he's seven. He's, seven, <laughs> he's, he's not allowed. <laughs> No, I was terrible. Like, I remember with my GCSEs, I was like, right, okay, um, I need to get these grades. So uh, I need to just get the bare minimum for that one. I'll really hit that subject. I just knew, I was so aware of what I was good at and what I wasn't because I think that was something I was forced to start questioning so early. Yeah. So I remember like ne literally negotiating. I was like, right, so maths, I need to get a C. So, and I was put on the higher paper. And back then the higher paper, you could either get an A star, A, B, or fail. And I was like, no, 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 I need to get a C for maths. So I had to go to school and say, can I be put on the intermediate paper? They said no, because I'm like, you can do it. I was like, no, 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 trust I me. I don't want to. <laughs> my brain won't do it. My brain, if I, if I don't like something, it's not going to do it. And so, also if you've set your goals, then you know what you have to yeah. do, and that's what you want. And, it, and, it, and, I, and I generally don't think it was limiting myself. I knew that I had no, I didn't have the interest to work hard at maths. And I also sort of knew it wasn't going to be in my future. So... I had to. I had to end up paying to move, change my paper from higher to intermediate. My school made me pay. They made you pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they thought I wasn't going to cough up, and I just said my pocket money. And then you money. did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I was not fucking around. <laughs> I was like, "How much, bitch?" <laughs> so I did. Yeah. So what was the on. goal then? To do those? To to leave school? Well, what were you I, thinking at that time? Because well, it certainly wasn't going to be a doctor. No, no. Well, by that point, I knew I wanted to be an actor. Right. By that point. And there was a, there was a Saturday drama group that I used to go to um, that was, it was funded by um, English National Opera when they had, I don't know if they still have, again, all these things have disappeared now. They used to have like an education sector called Ian O. Bayliss. Is a, they ran this Saturday drama group. I think you paid twenty pounds at the beginning of the term, and I used to just save my pocket money. Again, don't which, ask your parents; but, they'll let you do it. But which, in the grand scheme of things, is nothing. Yeah, grand, they, and nothing. that's amazing. You know, I know. I, I've spoken to so many people, uh, you know, older than you, and it was like a pound yeah. for a session. Yeah. You know, every Saturday, it's sometimes mad. even free, because ran by the government, which yeah. is 
great for the children. It's, you know, even if they don't want to do it as a profession, yeah. they're just letting it things matter. out. And they're, they're feeding something. And it doesn't it matter. can just go. It just, but yeah, loads of those things don't exist. So what, it's so annoying because I do loads of mentoring for National Youth Theatre and at RADA and when people, well, RADA is sort of at RADA then, but like for National Youth Theatre where people go, young kids go, right, so how do I, what did you do? And I was like, well, I had all these things. And this and is not that long not ago. Like, and also even in that small amount mm. of time, it's changed. Yeah, so, so much So what's going to be like in another five or ten years? I'm finding it harder and harder to give words of like advice because the only reason why I'm an actor is because... I had the kindness of teachers and mentors who said, go and do this course and go and try this. And that is the only way that I had no relationship to acting. Otherwise, what, how would I have known? It was, it's really sad. It's really sad. That's the only way I'm an actor. You wouldn't want to stick it. Would you want to try it at now? Absolutely not. Now? What's starting now? Like yeah. being a kid now? Yeah. I mean... Okay, the thing oh, actually, not maybe I'm knowing just, what you know, how it is now to try and get in. It's just it's changed so much. I think in the last five years, it's just become a whole different yeah game. Mm. I think the good thing now is that there's so much more visibility than there was. So you can switch on the TV and you can see black actors. Like yeah. that was one of the hardest things was that I'd switch on the telly and I wouldn't see me. Um, that was really hard. Now you can sort of see it and believe it. I think that's great. But I think that, you know, I remember my first TV job was when I was 17. Um, so just before I went to RADA. And, you know, I got paid more for that than you do for telly jobs now. <laughs> like, it's just, it's just yeah, everything's changed. Everything's changed, doesn't it? Like, you can do, you can do up to, you can do like six telly jobs in a year and get like 12 grand for it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you're busy and your yeah. CV looks nice and bulky, but what, the fuck are you getting paid for it? And lots of people just think you're really rich. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see my text, <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think that is. But I think what people are getting really good at is like like people younger than me. It's like everyone's about their side hustle. Every everybody's so open about like, okay, what's the other thing that I do as well as acting? Like I know loads of people have started up self tape. Uh, company, so they get people over, actors over, and they put themselves on tape and send everything off to their agent, and they do that for a fee and headshots and blah, blah, blah. Like, people are so proactive. And I think that's one of the reasons why <clears throat> I started writing, because I was like, I... There is... Um, I don't audition for a lot. I just get a lot of the jobs that I audition for. Right. That's the truth. I don't, like, in comparison to my white friends, I don't get that many auditions at all. I just get a lot of the jobs that I go for. And yeah, that sounds impressive, but I'm like, I know what happens to women once you turn 35. Yeah. <laughs> I've been told that story. So I was just thinking it does start from a selfish place of, you know, there, there isn't enough roles and it shouldn't just be about me getting that job. I want it to be, I, I want to meet other black women on the same job yeah. rather than always be one of us. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Always like, between me and her again. All oh, right, great. I fucking hate that. Yeah, yeah. And I just thought it just, it isn't enough me just being lucky at the moment. I was like, there needs to be more stories created. And do you think that's happening? Do you think anything's changing? Because there's, you know, especially over the, I don't know, the last 18 months, some mm. of the, you know, there's talk. I mm. not talking's great because that's the starting point, mm. but we can only talk so much. So much. I think that, I think there's been a lot of change for women because there's so many women writing. But I am, I really strongly believe that the change is only going to happen when the people running, you know, channels uh, are different and do not all go to the same five schools. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying that those schools don't produce brilliant brains, but they just, everywhere that you look at higher up, like high up at production companies and at, at channels and networks and stuff, they're all kind of from the same, cut from the same cloth. And I think that it needs to diversify there, otherwise it isn't true diversity. And also diversity. you've got to look at who's writing the scripts. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I'm writing now. Well, I was really <laughs> shocked. I, I did a, um, I was part of a drama at the beginning of the year mm -hmm. and it was, it was very, very female-led from all sorts of walks of life. Yeah. And 
there was some statistic, and, and forgive me because I can't remember the yeah. exact percentage of like just even just female writers, mm -hmm. but it was much much lower. I must, I, I'll, I'll figure, I'll, I'll find out the percentage and I'll put it on the intro, or the outro yeah. to this episode, uh, probably the outro. But it was very very low. Yeah. I mean, it was less than half, and it's like, well, most of those are just sort of white middle class voices. Yeah. Yeah. Because there was a time when there wasn't a lot of northern voices, mm -hmm. and I went, "Oh well, I feel a bit. I, I'm, I'm not from there, so I don't. I don't feel there's anyone talking yeah. to me." And it just sort of changes. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, well, when's it going to change for everybody else? Because I'm fucking bored yeah. of seeing what I'm seeing. To be honest, because <laughs> yeah. that does not represent what I know and where I live. Yeah, I or, I, I always believe it. It starts at the top, yeah. and if there's not, so sometimes I feel a bit like. When people, like, for instance, when I um, started taking writing seriously and I started going on all these, like, meetings, everybody wanted to meet me and I had, like, this really hot pilot script and everybody wanted to meet me, everyone wanted to... I went on so many fucking meetings, 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 and I just talk, thought... Talk, talk, talk. Yeah, I had to stop. I actually had to say to my literary agent, I was like, we, and now we don't do meetings anymore because I'm only interested if you want to make my thing. But people just want to... They don't want to put their money where their mouth is, I think. But they like to be seen to yeah. be having the yeah, discussion. Yeah, yeah. Oh, of course I've we met, met her. We met with that person. Oh, oh, I love her. Oh, we had her in the other day. Oh, I read her script. It's fantastic. Oh, you like it too? Oh, you like it? <laughs> it's yeah. like we'll make it there. Yeah. And I just, I'm, I'm being really careful about the people that I actually go and meet. They have to have an interest in, in making a very spe like specific story. And also now. an interest in you as a yeah. writer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because as you said before, you're not writing this to get you no. on there. You're writing it to open the door yeah. for, for other people and as that well. Was, and that was a very quick, that was a qu very quick realisation because I was like, look, I see the need for more diverse voices and of course I'm, I'm going to write for myself, but actually in writing I can't help but make it diverse, not because I'm being PC, but because that is actually the, what I grew up and that's what I know and I really believe right what you know. And so there is a role for those people. There's a role for loads of people. Yeah. And that feels, and knowing that I'm doing that genuinely and not because I'm forced or because I'm ticking a box, but because it's making this story better is really, to know that I can do that is really nice. And I've just learned that sometimes you just need to write the character and you put exactly where they're from or exactly what they look like, exactly what where they're from in the UK. You have to do that. Otherwise, you if you leave that alone... The list of people it, who end up... It gets interpreted Yee. as... Oh, right, them again. Oh, the lead, so obviously right, it's going to okay, be... there's f those five people... Yes, exactly. ...as the norm. I'm so... so like, I've just done my first short film, which I'm so excited about. What, that you directed? No I, do, no, I didn't direct it. I didn't feel brave enough to do it, but I produced it, I've written it, and I'm in it. I've actually done a bit of an Eddie Murphy. I'm playing, like, two roles in it. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> I know. Well, if you're gonna if you're gonna jump in the pool, <laughs> jump in the big pool. Don't get in the baby pool. <laughs> As I was doing it, I was like, "Is this completely egotistical? Is this bad? Is this is this bad?" And I was like, "No, it's great. No, um, it's all right." I've, actually, no, I'm very proud of it. You should be proud of I'm it. I'm really, That's good. really proud That's of good it. Good news. But it was it was really interesting with the casting. Well, I didn't have a casting director. I casted it. I was like, "These are the people," and it was a mix of like Daisy May Cooper's in it. Brilliant. Um, you know, just a favour. I was like, please, I know you're really busy. Can you come and do this? She was like, absolutely. And there was a couple of, there was like one actress who I saw her in a play last year. She was absolutely brilliant. And then she hasn't really done anything since. In fact, she got dropped by her agent sh shortly after the play because actually she's amazing. I hope she doesn't mind me saying this. So her her agent wanted her to play. Um, you haven't mentioned her name, so it's fine. Yeah, so it's all right in yeah. it. Yeah, it's all right in it. Otherwise, um, we can always bleep it out. It's yeah. Fine. But her, her agent wanted her to play like a, a really shit, horrible slave part that had like two lines and be on tour for like five months. And this young girl said no. She exercised her early right. She was Good. like, no, Good. her agent dropped her. Well, fuck them. Yeah. But I didn't know this at the time. I just thought she was so good in that play. Where is she? And I had to go on Twitter and be like, can you tell me where this girl is? Found her. Found that out. I had no idea it was her first TV role doing this thing. But even her, like, you know, the the channel were like, we don't know who she is. And, and I was like, well... Oh, sorry, this was for, for, for my broadcast? Shorts. But yeah, this is for broadcast. Yeah, this is going to be on telly. Right, okay. Was yeah, for, yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they were just like, oh, cool. Who is she? We don't know who she is. And I was like, well... Yeah, you will do. Yeah, you will do. I was like, trust me, you don't want to let go of this. But I was like, right, we'll put her on tape. But 
she's literally the only person we're putting on tape, so... And we're very close to shooting, so I don't know. If you, you don't better, like her, I don't know what you're going to do. You better take the bars quick. And she absolutely smashed it. Of course she did. She absolutely smashed it. And, like, my other mate, who's only out of drama school a couple of years, um, again, they were like, we don't know who she is. And actually, with her, I didn't get her to tape. I was just like, oh, I've already told her I've cast her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, God, I guess she's going to just have to do it. <laughs> That's how she wanted. Did you see a they were great, though. Did you see a different side when you were putting that, that sort of producer-writer hat on? Yeah, I did. did. You see everything from a different angle. Well, I, I guess, I guess I realised that. I realise the biggest thing that I realise is that I've written this thing. Me, 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 me. <laughs> it's very autobiographical. Me, 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 me. But you've got all these other people who are now on board who's going to try and make your thing. Yeah. And so, you know, people who are not sleeping, people who, you know, are dealing with my emails and costumes emails and the art department's emails all the time for your thing. So to sort of stride around going, me, 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 me is rude. Because mm. everyone's working on it. Yeah, and everybody's so, got their own departments. Exactly. Yeah. And so very sort of naturally, <clears throat> I wanted to share, I wanted people to care about it as much as I did. That meant listening to what people had to say. And, you know, if costume had a really good idea, or if the art department had a really good idea or a suggestion, I felt I just wanted people to ha have ownership over it like I did. Of course, there were certain points where I was like, nah, 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 yeah. step off, step off, that, step off. No, no, that ain't going to work. Good, good, like, well done, but no. I, I like where you're coming from. Yeah, that's what? really interesting, but that's not it, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. But I had, uh, you know, I'm saying all this, but I had the most incredible team who really listened. It was so... I only really like collaborating. I don't really want to be the person at the back with, like, a megaphone going... It, it doesn't... It was... I, I'm very good at negotiating. Yeah, but that's when ego does come into it. Yeah, yeah. And we've all sort of worked with uh, those people <laughs> in whatever <laughs> department they have. At some point, yeah. luckily, very personally, in, for, in 21 years, very few. Mm, mm. Um, but, yeah, I but just yeah. love working with people. But, that, but that's what it's all about, isn't it? It's all, yeah. It should all be about collaboration. Do you know, at my drama school, my showcase, I remember... So it was a showcase when all the um, agents and producers and cast and directors come and see you in your final show, and we're meant to do a monologue and a duologue. And I just had this epiphany where I was like, fuck doing a monologue. Who wants to stand there and be like, my dad died, <laughs> daddy, and <I'm> black. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I just, I, don't, I was like, I don't like doing that. I'm going to do two duologues. And I remember one of the teachers saying to me, are you sure you want to do that? Because you don't really stand out and you need your moment to stand out. And I thought, actually not thought, I said, I was like, look, I feel comfortable when I'm watching somebody on stage having a good time, like, they're enjoying it. And, and also having a believable conversation, whatever thank it is. You. Because that's what it's all about. That's all that is, for me anyway. And so I just well, said. No, it is, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Well, well for some people, it is, isn't it? Well, when, yeah, because, well, that's when we go back to the ego, isn't uh -huh. it? Because when it's, I'm acting uh -huh. in my own bubble and uh -huh. it should all be about me. And the thing is, I don't think, I don't think I'm without ego. I think I've got a tremendous ego. But I just, I know that I, I learned so much from other actors. I love actors. People think that actors are wankers and lovey dovey. I I love I love I mean some of them are wankers, but um, yeah, I but love again, actors. I've, I love I'm actors. sorry you can't say this as a podcast, but I've got my hand up in front of his <laughs> face with five, you know, four fingers and a thumb. That's far, and not maybe not even five. Do you mm. know what I mean? Over so long, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, very few and far between. That's why I find them so interesting. Which yeah. is why when I'm doing this, we very rarely sort of talk get into the nitty gritty about jobs because no. that's boring and that's when it becomes egocentric yeah, yeah, whereas yeah. this we're talking about the human conditions yeah. and and people's journeys the human endeavor that, of acting is mad that's i know but it's exciting and yeah, it's interesting yeah, no, it's so, i love it i love it and i have oh, i feel and just more and more i just want to hug every actor that i meet because it's so hard and you know i had to give up like a lot of people i had to give up a lot to do this and so I just, I love being on stage with other actors, but I had to fight to do that. Yeah. I had to fight to do that, but I knew. Which is odd, isn't it? Well, yeah, I mean, odd. If you think about it, even though you thought it was odd at the time. Yeah, yeah. But I guess they just wanted me to shine, really. Yeah. Have my moment. Well, there's many ways that you can shine. Yeah. And you probably you probably did much better. Yeah, I know. I, 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 my plan worked. I yeah. signed with a really good agent that I'm still with. Of course. Who I love. But, um, 
but yeah, I, doing this short film has been, even when I got like notes that I just was like, you fucking what? <laughs> no. But it was such a, there were moments where I was like, actually, no, if you want that, if that is really important to you, I'll give you that in exchange for this doesn't change. Yeah, exactly. And they were like, cool. All right. But it was actually... With I'd always, one hand, you know, yeah. it's, that's what it's got to be. Yeah. And I really enjoyed that. And I didn't feel, and I, I do not feel like we've sacrificed it. In fact, it's been elevated. The best advice I got was don't be around people who you think that you can be cleverer than and boss around. You need people who are going to try and elevate you of course because we're always learning yeah. in whatever aspect we do whatever yeah. hat we've got on and that's you know one of the plus sides yeah you know of course there's loads of downsides but you can think of five downsides and then one plus side will come up and you'll just forget about all those yeah. downsides. Oh, yeah that's one of the reason why i'm doing what i'm doing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. let's go back yeah because you were talking about drama school then and yeah. that's really important to me <laughs> because of coming where you come from mm -hmm. mm. yeah and yeah. You went to RADA. I went to RADA. I got into the RADA. You got into the RADA. <laughs> you didn't get the grant, though, did you? No. No. No, I had to get a fucking loan. I because was so pissed off about that. grants were... T -t 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 yeah, they were gone. They were gone, gone by then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They were gone by then. So I had to loan. So I was going to be... Well, that was it. I, so you loaned it? Yeah. You loaned it up? Yeah, I'm paying, I'm paying that back. Right. But I just figured, look, I'm going to be as in as much debt as somebody who goes to Oxford or goes to Bristol. Absolutely. Or, so I'm going to go to drama school. So I had a year out after drama, for, after sixth form and applied and got into RADA really quickly. So I knew, I knew what I was going to do in that September really quickly. Were you working in that sort of gap in that year? <laughs> yeah, I worked at Madden Two Swords. Oh, did you? Yeah, I did, yeah. And, uh, and the plan was, I, well, the, the excuse was I'd lied to my parents and said, Oh, I'm going to go to Bristol University, but I want to defer my year and work and save up for to, to go. And they were they like, oh, they amazing. Didn't, they didn't know. No, in clock. They're like, brilliant. So you're just going to work and save? I was like, yeah, yeah. I was applying for drama school. Right. So, and I was working to pay for the auditions because obviously you have to pay for the auditions. Yeah. So I know, and they've even got more expensive. I mean, I know. It's really, know. it's not good. It's not good. It's not good. But I, so I did that, but luckily, money-wise, I got into RADA really quickly. So I, I think I'd only sent off, I'd only auditioned for Guildhall and RADA. I got my recall for Guildhall, then got into RADA. So I had to cancel my re I said to Guildhall, I've got into RADA. Yeah. So actually I saved loads of, mo and loads of money to of course. burn. And, and, and did. time and travel, yeah, yeah of <laughs> yeah, course. Yeah, yeah, so, um, so that was good. But I had to keep it secret. Um, I didn't, I remember finding out on the bus 453 in Elephant Castle, Getting a call from Nicholas Barter, who was the artistic director, the artistic director, principal of RADA then, saying, oh, Susan, just calling to say that you've got into, got into RADA. We'd love to offer you a place. And I, because I get really, I hate speaking on the phone, on the bus. I get really nervous. So I was on the phone. I went, yep. <gasps> yep. Okay. She's a bit cold, yep. isn't she? And then you <laughs> went, are you, are you all right? And I was like, yeah, I'm just, I'm just on the bus. He's like, oh. Okay, well, congratulations. Like, yep, okay, yep, yep, all right, all right, okay, bye-bye, 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 bye-bye. <laughs> like, walked home on a cloud, and I couldn't, I couldn't tell anyone. I didn't tell anyone. You didn't tell anyone? No, 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 not for a, not, I think I tell my older sister, so my older sister does um, musical theatre. She was always a singer. Right. And the thing is about singing versus acting is that with singing, you just open your mouth and a voice comes out. So people go, oh, you're talented. Whereas with acting, I can't just stand in the living room and go and do a speech, and also... Certain people find that good and some certain people won't. Whereas a, a good singing voice, I think, is ultimately, you can just hear it. Yeah. So that was sort of her passion. And at that point, she was sort of moving from being a singer to theatre. So I thought, after about two two weeks after I got in, and I hadn't told anyone. I think I told a couple of friends, and that was it. And I thought, oh, no, I better, I better tell, I'll tell my sister. And um, I remember telling her, and she was like, oh, okay, let me speak to mum. Let me speak to mum about it. So she spoke to my mum separately about it. And then my mum... What, on your behalf? On my behalf. Because she knew it was going to kick off. Right. And, uh, and I spoke to my mum and my mum was just like, what is RADA? <laughs> she was like, what is that? And I was like, well, um, Kenneth Branagh went there. She's like, who? <laughs> I was like, Alan Rittman, die hard. She's like, oh, okay. And all the people I was listening were just white men. Yeah. <laughs> so she's looking at me going, and where do you fit into all yeah, of that? Why are you going here? But the thing that helped is that was Royal Academy. Royal. The Royal helped. She's so like, okay. like that. She's like, it's proper. Okay. And so she said, just don't tell your dad. 
don't tell your dad. Do not tell your dad. So I was like, right, okay, not going to tell dad. And then I went, that summer, before I went to start term, I did a show, my final show with National Youth Theatre. And that was up in Manchester in Salford. We were doing a play at the Lowry and just was having a fucking ball. We were just getting drunk and doing a show. It was great. I was having the... Being in Manchester. Oh, my God. Yeah. Fell in love with... Oh, God, I had such a good time there. And then I got a call from my dad. And he went... Oh, I've just, um, you've just got a letter. I was like, oh, yeah. He's like, it's from Rada. And it was like the letter that you get that lists all the books oh. and like all the all like clothes. And all yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, this is what you need for the start of term. So it was so obvious that I was going. Yeah. And he was like, did you, are you going to drama school in September? And I said, yeah, yeah, I, I am. And he went, okay, when you come back, we have to talk about this. So got back from Manchester. Um, my dad just said, if you're going to study at drama school, you can't live here. And he kicked me out. No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he did. Which is so weird because I was only going to school, like, just off Tottenham Court Road. Yeah. It felt weird to not go home. Or, it, it was really, it was quite strange. It was, re it was really, really odd. That's awful. I think he just felt so heartbroken because because I was choosing a profession that is so difficult. And I guess us Western kids don't really, really understand what it's like to be without in the way that he does. And we're in this country where we get like a free education and free healthcare and you can be, like I say, the gold star, you can be anything that you want to be. Yeah. And I'm choosing the hardest profession, which visibly, like in terms of visibility, there's no one like me. He, it seemed, bonkers to him and also i think <laughs> for my parents we were like their their pension <laughs> yeah you know you put all your in, all into your children and then they become doctors and they look after you and it was like how are you going to look after me but your sister <laughs> your sister was singing yeah and she was going into theater yeah right yeah, i know <laughs> so well, I, i'm trying to sort of rationalize how you could have been treated like that and kicked out of the family home. Well, she, my sister very early on showed, showed uh, talent in with singing really early on. Right. So they're not monsters. They were like, right, that makes sense. But, sure. if, but if I'm good at drama, but I'm also really good at science, why wouldn't you just pick science? Because why it's would obviously you pick not fulfilling but, for you as but, a person. But for them, it's like, but that's where the money is. That's right. where you're not going to be, send your kid to school with yeah. no skirt. Like yeah. we've had to do. How did that f affect your relationship with your mum? Um, it really badly affected it because I was angry at her. I thought she knew that I was going to her. Did she'd sort of given her blessing? Yeah. It was like, do you? You're really stubborn. I know that you're going to try and make it work. And in that moment, she didn't go. Come on. Did you feel unsupported by her? Oh, completely. Point? That was the end of that. I never spoke about drama school it was very hard going through drama school and not having any family to talk about yeah. weird stuff that would happen or things that i was unsure about or did you talk to anybody about it at the time because you're starting a new journey you're going to drama school and yeah. all that home life shit's just kicked off well i had to... teachers and mentors it all comes back to that a tremendous woman who's one of my closest friends still called maria leaf and she taught me at this Saturday drama group, the one that's sponsored by English National Opera. Yeah. So, so I met her at 14, went there every Saturday. And um, she only told me this, I think this year or last year, is when I would, I'd always arrive, arrive slightly late, like 10 minutes late. And because um, I'd get the bus and the bus would take ages. Anyway, I was always there. I'd always arrive. And what I didn't know was that my dad used to call in the drama group and just like hell abuse at them because like what are you doing with my daughter and oh, no. and i had no idea she never told me she only told me like this year i think it was this year or last year that they knew what was going on but i'd always come into class and never show it and they never brought it up so i didn't know so she knew actually looking back it makes sense she offered i she said that i could live with her yeah for my first term she, now that I know that she knew all of, she actually knew the, the gulf of it, how opposed, and I, I think it's not just, not to paint my dad out as a, as a villain at all, and he's not alive, so it's not fair, but he, 
was scared he couldn't protect me in acting. He didn't understand it. This world where, you know, all you do is hear stories about actors yeah. falling off the wagon and yeah. this horrible thing happening and this, like, he couldn't, it's not a world that he could give me any advice, protect me. So if he just goes, all right, off you go, you do it on your own, then he, he doesn't feel helpless. Did he feel that when he gave you that ultimatum? Yeah. That you were going to say, all right, well, I won't go to the drama school then? Yeah. Actually, no, he knew me by then. I'm so fucking stubborn. He, no, he knew it was get out. He knew it was, it was leave. And I was fine with it. There wasn't an argument. Because actually I thought <sighs> I can start this RADA place and be in an environment where I can concentrate. And when Maria said, here's a sp spare room, I knew that I'd be with somebody who, I mean, when I t got into RADA, you know, what I didn't get at home, I got from her. She was so, she couldn't believe it that one of her kids is gone to they got in they got in mm. um so how old were you at this point i was 19 right yeah so it's still pretty young to have that fractured relationship yeah with with your parents and also you're feeling great animosity towards your mum yeah and, and you're starting this new path so you must have been putting on your suit of armour yeah. really early yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that shit was like made I mean, to measure man <laughs> absolutely I mean the resilience and yeah, you do. Is, there is, is unbelievable yeah I, and you know what there's loads of moments in my career now where things haven't worked out and whatever where I have to look back at the time and go you're a boss man yeah like you're made like whatever went th you went through with your parents they gave you really fucking strong DNA like you did get a lot from them yeah of course of course it did and i have to say like it did it has come good i remember i went out to la i think <laughs> I went out to LA, <laughs> um at the beginning of the year and i remember being at, i was at the airport and i called my mum just to be like yeah about to get on the plane love you da, da, da. and she said this is the most powerful thing she was just like i can't i just i just want to say i can't believe you're an actress you said that you want to be an actress now you're an actress mad you just are you said it and then you are yeah, well, sometimes these things can happen. And if we don't say them, yeah. then we can never even begin to try and be them. Yeah. Whatever it is. Yeah. But she's immense. She's like, she thinks I'm utterly impressive. She you thinks are. I'm a boss. I like, think you a are. proper boss. <laughs> <laughs> I really fucking do. But, it did, but, to, but do you know what was really good about having that separation was what? that my career never became about making my parents proud. Very quickly, I had to get rid of that. I had to get rid of that. That was not helpful. It was non-existent. Well, it, it was, it, you weren't given a choice to get rid of it. It was got, it, was, it, it, was, yeah. it got rid of itself. It got rid but, of it for you, really. But I, think, but, but I think also if you're, you know, your dad does kick you up before you go to drama school, there could be a bit of you that's like, I, I'll show you. Yeah. And, and that didn't ever exist. If I just felt like, oh, okay, I can get on with this without, you know, the drama of arguments about it or like wondering who my new druggy friends are, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the new yeah. actory druggy friends. I just thought, okay, I can get on with it now and just... So it even to this day, I sometimes forget to tell my mum about jobs that I've got or things that I'm doing because it's just it is quite it is quite separate. Well, also you, you 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 started that path solo. Yeah, you yeah. Didn't have you didn't have that? All those other people starting rather would have the support of their family and you more or less. Have, you, more well, less. Yeah, I more mean, less. I'm generalising, obviously. But, but no, but, but no, yeah, yeah, no. But you no, didn't. No, didn't. We didn't at all. And at first, I think that was very freeing. Oh, God, I was naughty. Oh, I had a good time. <laughs> I bet you I had did. a good time. <laughs> I had a good time. I've got days to make people coming on here, so I'll get all the stories. So don't oh, can't put shit. anything out oh, on God. me. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I'll have a You know I've had Charlie on. I know you yeah, have. Yeah. You're going to get Daisy on? Yeah, she's coming on. Oh, God. They're just finishing off a little bit of something. She, yeah, she'll tell you some, some, good, some good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Just, yeah. just to, to talk about your family again. Yeah. And I just wanted to ask, did you reconcile your relationship with your dad before he passed away? Kind of. Um... Kind of. Bless him. He, I just got to a point where I was just getting on with it and the phone was ringing a lot more than it ever had. had like, sort of, how, how are you doing? I'm like, fine. After cool. how long was this? So that was like my whole time at drama school. So all the three years. You weren't speaking? We spoke a bit. Right. We spoke a bit. Did he come and see you in anything? Oh my God. Yeah. He came to, oh, oh, he came to, <laughs> 
So third year. Okay, this is a point. I think this is a point that, that died, that sort of I want my family to be included in, in, in this thing. He came along to see... And also, them. third year's a special time. And, Ever, and everyone, you're meeting everyone's parents. Yeah, exactly. And I was very aware... I think the thing that made it even worse was I had, my boyfriend at the time was in my year at drama school, so his parents were just always seeing him and stuff, and I was meeting them, and and they were lovely, lovely people, and it just made me sort of go, I don't have somebody to introduce you to. So I tried to... I invited my dad to our first show, which was um, a restoration comedy... Man of Mode. Right, okay. And, oh God, I mean, at best of times, I don't understand restoration <laughs> comedies. So I remember, you know, it was a really big thing to say, Dad, I'm going to get you a ticket. It's going to be at the box office. This is where the school is. Um, and, uh, yeah, come along. And I thought he just wouldn't get anything at shit. He came out and he fucking loved, loved it. it. He loved it. And do you want to know why? Right. It's because it's old worldy English, isn't it? It, it's academic. Right, you yeah. need a brain to understand that and to execute it. So he was just like, oh, that was In great. His element. Yeah, I was like, mm, you and your gold star, like yeah. fucking whatever. Then I invited him to my next show. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm all like, yeah, oh my God, maybe my dad is going to be finally proud of me. Then I invited him to my next show, which was a play called Four by Christopher Shin. It's not particularly explicit. Oh. That, that was one scene when I had to snog this guy in my ear and, and basically rip his trousers off and then climb on top of him and then it it all goes to black as I'm basically taking off my clothes. And um, I didn't think about that because I was so proud of the play. Yeah. And I had a really good time and it was only the four of us um, doing this play. And um, yeah, and I just thought it was good work. I thought it was really good work. And I just didn't put two and two together and afterwards going out to the bar and my dad's face was stone cold he didn't say anything he just turned to leave walked out of the building what, so when followed, he saw you coming yeah, and then he turned, to, he turned leave. to leave i followed him out i was like oh dad you're right didn't say anything until we got to good street station then he turned to me and it was just like you are a whore <laughs> I was like, what? He was like, how can you... Because he knew my boyfriend at the time as well. And he was just like, how can your boyfriend watch you do that? Oh do that God. with another man? Like That you couldn't separate? Yeah, no, no. And then I thought, that's the last time. <clears throat> that's the last time I'm inviting to anything. We didn't even have... I, could, I, didn't, I couldn't even have an argument with him. I just thought... I didn't think about that, about like doing love scenes with your parents. I just thought that they would be all right with it. Yeah. For whatever reason. Yeah. And yeah, that was a really big, that was a big shock. That was a really big shock. Yeah. And I thought, oh, I'm, I'm just, I don't want to ever come off stage and have to deal with that anymore. No, no, should Actually, you? Yeah. do you know what? He did come and see, he did come and see a play. I did a play at the Royal Court. And um, <clears throat> it's my first play in London. And I'd done like, I'd done a play at the Royal Exchange in Manchester. Manchester. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I'd done like quite a lot of telly and um, after like coming out of drama school and t this was the point where I'd sort of pop, pop up on TV and he'd be like, Susan, you didn't tell us you're on Hobby City. You've made it. Woo. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really, it's got nothing to do with you. And he actually turned up to a play that I did at the Royal Court. And I remember being so nervous and all the other actresses in the play, Wumi Masaku was one of them. And I was having a, a bit of a panic attack. Like my dad texted me. He's like, I'm outside. And I was like, I can't like... I just don't, I, don't, I just don't want to deal with it. So Wumi went down actually before I did to speak to him and be like, hi, you know, we're the actors in the thing. Da, da, da. And I came downstairs and cause I had to play a, a young South African girl and he just found it hilarious. I was playing another African. Like I was, I wasn't, I had to learn this South African accent. Yeah. So all he kept doing was like repeating my lines and like how cool <laughs> it was. Like you learn another African accent. <laughs> That's so weird. And actually that was, that was fine. That was fine. But I think just, I sort of was mental note, never bring him something where I'm sexing up some buff man in his case. Yeah. <laughs> if, he, if he can't separate no. that from, from no. his daughter, that's, yeah. Yeah. I think it's kind of safer <laughs> for everybody, really. Yeah. Yeah. That must have been really shocking, though. It was. I was really hurt. Also, because I was so proud of it. Mm. And also, I was like, Dad, you've had sex at least four times. Like, I know that because we're here. Like, yeah. come on. Um, 
but yeah, no, that was a, that was a shock. I was pretty, quite surprised by that. I just sort of forgot. I just sort of forgot. Are there ever any times for you where you think, "Nah, I'm all right. I think this. I, I think I've I've done my bit with this now. I've got what I needed to get out of this with acting." Yeah. Um, I'm taught, I suppose I'm pussyfooting around the bad times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think the main thing initially was money. Oh, the first few years of drama school, even though I was getting jobs, it just was not covering stuff, covering rent. It just wasn't doing it. Yeah. And I remember there was one point, there were several points in this. I was actually talking about it the other day. It's like this weird couple of years where I... Like, I remember I had to buy, like, a, a massive jumbo pack of custard creams, which had to last me the week. And I thought, that was a point, I was like, isn't it curious that all, like, the really bad food is the cheapest? I just, like, <laughs> fucking ballooned during this time. <laughs> I was like, I thought I had no food to eat, but it turns out it's just jammy dodgers. Yeah. Um, and not having money would used to drive me mad. Like, I would, even when I was acting, I would do waitressing shifts at the weekend. Oh, because so you're in just, London? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really expensive. Yeah. And it just was, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, things were just changed for, for young people. Yeah. When I, when I left drama school, which was 2010, we were just really just leaving at the worst time. Yeah. We we're leaving at the worst time. Things were really hard. Rent had gone from, you know, at RADA, where I was like looking for rent for about, you know, 425, 500 a month to being 700, 800 a month. Like that was what was happening. And it was really frustrating. Not having money actually became such a problem. Like not having enough money on my Oyster card and having to walk to auditions. Like that sort of thing was becoming, I was like, the, even if I love what I do, it's not the job that's forcing me away from it, but not having money is going to mean that I have to quit. I just can't afford to be an actor. Yeah. So that was a really, that was really bad. And then they got to a point where I got, I guess, I mean, when I started just uh, living off acting, it became, you know, you've done this one really big high profile job and now you have to, that's all the, the, the work that you do from there on in has to be at that level, yeah. which means keeping yourself more available for this fancier work. Whereas I was just a worker bee. Like I'd always say to my agent, if there's like short films, workshops, readings, you always bring it to me. Yeah. You don't know financially what I'm going through. So even now there'll be like this short films come in and it's just a bit of money. And there's never any judgment if I go, yeah, I'll do it. Because they understand that. And also artistically, you can't, you can't, you don't want to get scale the ball. You don't, within you yourself Thank and you, you need to sort of, yeah, yeah, you can get up and you can write, but also you need to interact with those other people and, and keep the, the, the cogs oiled, yes. you know? And I love doing stuff like that. Yeah. And so it was, there was and just also a you weird... don't know who you're going to meet and who you're going to work with. You know, oh my God, has really that exciting. paid off for me yeah. a couple of times, yeah. Really paid off for me a couple of times. I'm getting paid £2.50 for this part, yeah. but it's only a couple of days yeah. I think it's going to be really yeah. exciting. Yeah, yeah, I've, yeah. I've met this person and I really believe in her. I think she's going to be brilliant. Yeah. And you have to, you have to you make those decisions. Know. Yeah. And, um, but there was a point where I did this Netflix show and, uh, and it just, after that, it was like, okay, cool. So now you have to make yourself available for this kind of work. And, you know, we're going to have to put theater on the back burner for the first time. And it all just felt, it was a language I didn't really understand. Cause I'm like, you work, you work, you work, you work, you work. And work and, breeds work. And work breeds work. But the thing, and this is my point, I have not played a lead since that part in 2016. Like I, and I've rarely gone up for leads since then. It was, it's a rarity. <laughs> it's rare. And so this idea of you do that and you did really well in it and you won an award for the role and whatever. And so therefore it's going to lead. I knew because of what the industry is like for women like me. I was like, it's not going to happen again. And that was actually one of the reasons why I have to write because I can't, I want to play leads. I want to lead narratives. That's just the truth. And it just wasn't coming. But if the material's in. not there, then how can you? That's exactly. why you, we need to sometimes create our own forums on our own writing and get it out there. But that's where America happened for the first time in my career. Go on. So I was always really anti going to America, purely because I'm not a thin actress. 
And I just thought, they go there and they just tell you to lose weight. And, and I have thought, a specific look. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I thought, I fought way too hard to love me as, as I am now in this country. And that's been hard enough to then go over there and be like, we love you, but literally cut your size in half. That was the main thing. Like, yeah. Bod- body image and all the horror stories I'd heard about Hollywood. And basically, are oh, they having a good time? No. It's all kicking off in it's Soho all tonight. It's kicking yeah. off. And, um, and basically, it was a really big, it was so weird because I, I made my first trip to LA just as the elections were happening. Oh, so Ameri- America, the prospect of working in America became one thing and then another very <laughs> quickly. <laughs> um, but, the thing that I found, uh, I I audition tape, self-tape, for so many more things in the States. Like, actually, I'm so busy taping yeah. for leads than I am in the UK. And it's, uh, you know, I sort of, you know, I got the agent, then I got, a man- I got a manager, and then I got an agent, all that sort of stuff. And I thought, it's all too busy, and now it feels really corporate and stuff. But actually, the work that was coming in, I just thought, Oh, it, it pales, it like the UK pales in comparison. And, and is I mem- the quality still up there, though? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, of course, there's stuff that you I like. Mean, well, but look, you just say no. I don't put myself in. If I read something I don't like, it, I just yeah. Well, there's no point because you're going to just come across as bad. No, nah, no. Nah. You can't. I can't do anything. You can't and do I, anything with that. No. Nah. And I've learned, and I learned that when I went to pilot season, I did pilot season. I did pilot season twice. So um, I w- did it. Uh, last year for the first time but again my fear of I don't want someone to tell me to lose weight so I taped from the UK I just didn't I didn't go over yeah and ended up testing for two shows from the UK right and so based on that my American rep rightfully were like look all you've got to do is be in the room and then bam (laughs) so I was in the room and half bams like I got like I got one job and then I met with Elizabeth Olsen actually and auditioned for her and all these brilliant, lovely people walked out, you've got the job and then it just went quiet. And then it was the network had decided to go with someone else. Right. That happened and like getting really close to stuff. But there I really, because that is such a machine reading scripts and going, fuck, I don't want to audition for this because I don't, I don't respond to it. I don't really like it. I don't yeah. think it's very good. But if I audition for it and I, then I get it, then I'm signing for seven years. And da, da, da. So it's I the learned, flip side, isn't it? I learned to say no. Well, that, that was is, what, that was just this year. I was like, no, no, no. But no. that that's a great power, and it comes up all the time when I talk to actors on air. Yeah, that, saying um, no, say no. But do you know what? My manager though made a really fucking good point because I was. You know, it's not because I think everyone in in the States is, is a monster and is going to tell me to lose weight. I'm just, it takes a lot of hard work to be a confident black woman in the UK. <laughs> like it's, it's you know, in spite of a lot of things yeah. that, I, that I'm like the way that I am. And I just, I'm so protective of that infrastructure, I yeah. guess. And, um, but my manager made a really good point. She was just like, Susan, in pilot se- season, during pilot season, you will audition for more things than you audition for in a whole year in the UK. And she's bang on. Yeah. When she said that to me, I went, oh, she's fucking right. You'll be turning auditions down because you simply can't fucking fit them in. Yeah, in yeah. And day. that's what I was doing. I was like, I, I literally can't happens. learn stuff. I can't yeah. learn stuff in that amount of time. Yeah. Don't want to do a bad tape. I'd rather no, not. And also you've got to learn it because yeah. it's America. Yeah. You've got to learn it. Yeah. So yeah, they, they did get to a point where I was like, I actually physically can't go in for this. I don't want to embarrass myself. Like, I just, I don't want to meet all these, these amazing, important people and then be shit in the room. Nah. <laughs> so then you carry that around with you for a couple of days. Oh, and yeah. Oh, God. And then it, it has a domino effect with something else and you'll take your baggage of that bad meeting into another, into another bad one. Into another one. Yeah. yeah. So towards the end of my trip, I was doing that. I was taking my bag, my, my luggage into, into rooms. Are you some, are you good at switching off though? Because I know, you know, when, you, um, when you've yeah. got uh, such an amount of auditions, like when you're doing stuff for pilot and Mm-mm. maybe, I don't know, you're doing four a day or whatever, mm-hmm. something stupid like that and you're learning loads of pages. Yeah. I sometimes find it's easier to forget about them. Yeah. Because you just do it and move on. Whereas yeah. over here, you put so much time and effort into something. Yeah. You go, well, I've only got two days and I've got 14 pages. Yeah. 
and then you go, all oh, right, you haven't even set out. Well, the, the rate of stuff for pilot season is just, it's so much that you just forget that you went up for stuff. Oh, what? I Wait, what? I don't remember that. I don't yeah, remember exactly. that thing. And I yeah. think that's quite helpful. I just, it was so much that I just ended up forgetting. I just forgot. I just mm. forgot. Um, whereas There's here so it's so many few. things going on yeah. in your brain. Which is quite, I think it's quite good because you don't get attached to stuff really in the way that I do get really attached to if the script's good here. I just, I can't help. Well, I can't help. I know that, I was talking about it to, to a boyfriend where it's like, you've got to gear up for that heart, that heartbreak. And I sort of, I just, I lean into it now. Like when something comes in and I read it, I'm like, fuck, that's good. It's going to be, it's going to break my heart if I don't get this. But, yeah. but here we go. I had that actually this year. So after pilot season, I sort of left and, and was like, right, that isn't for me. And then I ended up being flown out for two shows, which I tested for. And they were both fantastic. They were both really, re like really good, well suited, well written projects. And the thing, okay, now the money thing, the thing that I find really hard about testing for stuff is that you basically sign the contract. You sign yeah. the contract, I'm going to do, before you go in for your final audition, you sign the contract, yes, Susan McComa would love to play this part for this amount of cash. Knowing how much money I'm missing out on is a cruel game to play to a working class person. I just, and now we have a, uh, we have a rule as a result of that, where I say, I don't want to know. Cause otherwise the stakes just go yeah. for I, you before you step in that room for exactly. that final time. And yeah. I just said, look, maybe it seems crazy, but I trust you guys to get me the a best. really good, I, I, yeah. I do. You, sometimes you're not rep by people. You do. Yeah. My lot are sick. Yeah. So I was like, look, I actually, I know you guys, you're going to get me the best deal. So from, if we're ever in that position again, you don't tell me. But I think that's smart because you are taking that pressure off yourself yeah. and you're just focusing on what you have to do and you have to go in the room and try yeah. and do your best. Otherwise, you've got all those figures. Yeah. And it isn't just about oh, money. It's just literally, it's like, oh, I can give my mum that and I can do that and I can get that. It's not, it's not in a fame and fortune way. It's just no. in a fucking, like, to live, because yeah. it's that expensive to live in London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And London's my home. That's the thing. It's not... I don't see London as like, to, I've got to be in London to be near to, to, to my career or my no, industry. You're, you're really I'm a Londoner. Funny. Yeah, exactly. And the idea of going, oh, well, now I have to move out is heartbreaking to me. I feel so safe when I'm in London. Yeah. And also the knock-on effect of them moving out is that other places outside of London get more expensive because we're all moving out. Yeah, and I'm so true. aware of that change of you know, gentrification because it's happened in Peckham doesn't fucking look like Peckham anymore. Brixton blows my mind. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I walk down the streets, it's weird. And it's not necessarily bad. It's not necessarily bad to make a, a place better or nicer or to have like a fancy coffee shop. I'm not averse to that. It's just when you say we want to make it nicer because the people who originally live here are, we're pushing them out. <laughs> Yeah. That I have a fucking problem yeah, with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It love... seems to happen in so many different areas exactly. all the time. And I just feel guilty about making that happen somewhere out of London. So when these figures came to me, I was like, oh my God, I'll be able to buy somewhere outright in London. That's what I'm thinking. That's yeah. my big, that's my aim. My goal is to buy my own place. That And that's it. Beyond that, I'm, I'm good. I've no doubt it'll happen. <laughs> Susan, thank you so much. That was brilliant. <laughs> did you enjoy that? I did. A bit. I fucking talk too much. You don't talk. You and another episode is done. How about that? Isn't she brilliant? Um, yeah, I, I, I don't think I've only been twice that that I may have been lost for words or been so taken aback by a story. Um, and there were certainly moments in that where I was. So Susan, if you're listening, I just want to say thank you so much for coming on. It was great. It was brilliant. Now look, the short film that Susan was talking about that, that she directed, um, is now available on Sky. So, uh, go check it out. There's loads of comedy shorts on. Susan's one of them. I've seen it. It's really funny. It is really funny, genuinely. Um, but it's really moving um, and very heartfelt. Uh, yeah, I loved it. So please go check it out. She's done a cracking job. Um, and you've done a cracking job because you've joined us. I'm so happy, honestly. Um, you know, we've got the Patreon site. 
patreon.com forward slash the two shot podcast. Go there, have a look at the video. If you can chuck us a few quid, if you like it, what we do, the free podcast once a week, um, slip us a few quid, maybe. Um, you don't have to, they're going to be free, but you know, we do it, um, out of the goodness of our hearts now. Yeah, we do. We do. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. Um, look, if, if you can't afford to, again, that's absolutely fine. Um, they'll still be free. That's, that's all happening. We've got some amazing guests coming up. Um, I can't, I can't say anything right now, but I think you need to tune in next Thursday. I was so close to telling you next Thursday is, and I can't do it, but I will tell you, it will be, I believe, I think a podcast exclusive and, uh, yeah, this one, uh, this one could catch fire as they say. Um, but I'll tell you, I promise I'll tell you on Monday of next week. What else? Yeah, look, if you can't afford, I don't, I know I say it every week, but we don't have sponsorship from anybody and certainly not sponsorships that myself and Griff would trust and believe in to, to sort of sell to you. If we're going to have somebody or, or a company or a brand, we want it to be something that's useful and that we believe in. So until that day, we're just going to be us. Let's all work together. Let's have the conversation. And if we can help in any way, that'll be amazing. If you can't help financially, do us a favor. Go and tell five of your mates that they might enjoy the conversations that we had. Um, the more people that listen, then the more the better, isn't it? Uh, I'm going to stop. I'm going to go. And I'm going to have a lovely week. And I shall see you next week. I'm very excited about next week. I think you will be. I'm just, I can't keep... I, I've got to keep the secret. Right, I'm going. I'm giddy. Um, uh, thank you so much. Until next week, I've been Craig Parkinson. He's been producer Griff. And this has been the Two Shot Podcast. Take care. Two Shot Podcast is presented by me, Craig Parkinson, recorded and produced by Thomas Griffin for Splicing Block. Our music, our brilliant music, is courtesy of Then Thickens. Cheers. <laughs>